So today, May 13th, marks the beginning of a really interesting couple of weeks. Today, we got some new announcements out of OpenAI, which came right before Google's making announcements tomorrow. For whatever reason, OpenAI loves to do that. They love to pick the timing of their events to try to overshadow Google as much as possible. And today's OpenAI event seems to be exactly what they were trying to do. I'm actually out here in Mountain View, California right now, because I'm gonna be at the Google keynote tomorrow, but wanted to make sure that I got a video out as quickly as possible about what OpenAI just announced with their new model. Instead of calling this new model GPT 4.5 or GPT 5, they went with GPT 4.0. And as it turns out, that mysterious chatbot that we've been playing with called GPT 2 chatbot, and I'm a good GPT 2 chatbot, and I'm also a good GPT 2 chatbot, we're all actually us getting the opportunity to test this new GPT 4.0. Now, while the model is improved a little bit, the biggest features about this model are the lower latency when having voice conversations, it seemingly has a better multimodal capabilities. And instead of me breaking it all down, let's watch little bits of the keynote and sort of talk through some of these new announcements that OpenAI just made. The big news today is that we are launching our new flagship model and we are calling it GPT-4.0. The special thing about GPT-4.0 is that it brings GPT-4 level intelligence to everyone, including our free users. So this is actually a big piece of news here. Up until now, if you were on the free version of ChatGPT, you were using GPT 3.5. Well, this new state-of-the-art model, GPT 4.0, is now gonna be available both for plus and free users, which means anybody can use this new state-of-the-art model completely for free. But if you're a plus member, you just get to use it a lot more. A very important part of our mission is to be able to make our advanced AI tools available to everyone for free. And today, we're also bringing the desktop app to ChatGPT. So this is another big update that they made during this keynote is that we now get a desktop app. Now in their demos that they show here in this video, they're only showing the desktop app being used on Mac. They didn't really say if it was Mac only or if it was gonna be Mac and PC. My guess is that it's probably going to come out for both platforms. In the demo, they only showed Mac and they didn't really speak to that piece of it. As you can see, it's easy, it's simple, it integrates very, very easily in your workflow. GPT-4.0 provides GPT-4 level intelligence, but it is much faster and it improves on its capabilities across text, vision and audio. So we're very, very excited to bring GPT-4.0 to all of our free users out there. And for the paid users, they will continue to have up to five times the capacity limits of our free users. So I'm gonna go back real quick on the screen here. And these are all the things now up here on the top right that chat GPT free users are gonna get access to. You're gonna be able to access the GPT store and all the custom GPTs. Vision, the browse model, which allows you to search the internet using chat GPT, the memory functions, and advanced data analysis, which used to be called code interpreter. Free chat GPT members get that. GPT-4.0 is not only available in ChatGPT, we're also bringing it to the API. So basically when they're saying they're also bringing it to the API, they mean that developers can actually work with this new model as well. However, that means that you can play with this model directly inside of the OpenAI Playground as well. If you go over to platform.openai.com slash playground and click on chat in the left sidebar, you can see on this little dropdown, we actually have GPT-4.0 over here. And one thing that's interesting to note is inside of the Playground, we actually have the ability to upload images or link to images. I don't believe that was ever available inside of OpenAI's Playground before. This is the first time I'm noticing it. Maybe it was there before for, but I'm pretty sure they just added the ability to upload images here with this new rollout of GPT-4.0. Our developers can start building today with GPT-4.0 and making amazing AI applications, deploying them at scale. 4.0 is available at 2x faster, 50% cheaper, and five times higher rate limits compared to GPT-4 Turbo. So we'll do some live demos. I love that they're doing these demos live as well, because I think it's sort of a little bit Bit of a message to Google. When Google put out their launch video for Gemini, they showed off all of these really cool capabilities and a nice 
pre-recorded polished video and it turns out that a lot of what they were showing was not actually real time. They made it look like it was doing these things a lot faster than it actually was capable of doing them. OpenAI is saying, hey, check this out. We're gonna show it to you live in real time. No camera trickery. This is how it works. They also kind of made that little nudge in their blog post as well about GPT-40. All videos on this page are at 1x real time. That note there was very intentional. It's a message to people who are comparing it to Google's launch. Guaranteed, that's why that's there. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Barrett. Hey, I'm Mark. So one of the key capabilities we're really excited to share with you today is real-time conversational speech. And if you see, there's this little icon on the bottom right of the ChatGPT app, and this will open up GPT-40's audio capabilities. Hey, ChatGPT, I'm Mark. How are you? Oh, Mark, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? Now, although they've been doing a lot of talking about GPT-40 and this new model and how it's gonna be in ChatGPT for free and it's gonna be in the API, I think they really wanted to do this keynote today to show off this voice feature. This is very reminiscent of the movie Her, where he basically has a chatbot companion that he talks back and forth with, who's voiced by Scarlett Johansson. And if you listen to this voice, a very similar sounding voice. Just what they're showing off here here makes me think that we're about to see an explosion of AI girlfriend apps because the conversation feels so much more realistic. And as they're having this conversation, one thing to note is the latency difference. You used to ask a question, there'd be a little pause for five or six seconds, and then you'd get the response. Now the responses are a little bit more real time. It's feeling a little bit more like a real human to human conversation. Hey, so I'm on stage right now. I'm doing a live demo. And frankly, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Can you help me calm my nerves a little bit? Oh, you're doing a live demo right now? That's awesome. <laughs> Just take a deep breath. And remember, you're the expert here. I like that suggestion. Let me try a couple deep breaths. Can you give me feedback on my breaths? Okay, here I go. <laughs> Whoa, slow down a bit there. Mark, you're not a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Breathe in for a count of four. Well, that's pretty crazy that it actually can listen to your breathing and tell you you're breathing too hard and it shows us that it is doing a pretty decent job of understanding some of the context of the conversation. I'm gonna breathe in deeply and then and breathe And then out. for four and then exhale slowly. Okay, I'll try again. Breathing in and breathe out. <sighs> that's it. How do you feel? I feel a lot better. Thank you so much. They were having a little bit of internet issues, probably because there's so many people all trying to connect to the same Wi-Fi. The demo definitely was live, and you do get a little bit of an extra delay that you probably wouldn't have normally just because of the connection issues. You've used our voice mode experience before. You'll notice a couple key differences. First, you know, you can now interrupt the model. You don't have to wait for it to finish your turn before you can start speaking and you know, you can just butt in whenever you want. Second, the model is real time responsive. That means that you don't have this awkward two to three second lag before you wait for the model to give a response. And finally, the model picks up on emotion, right? When I was breathing super hard there, it could tell and it knew, hey, you might wanna calm down a little bit. You're kind of running a little bit too fast. You know, it really has that capability across the board to perceive your emotion. Not only that though, the model is able to generate voice in a variety of different emotive styles. And it really has a wide dynamic range. So my friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Gather round, Barrett. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Bite. Bite was a curious robot, I always like exploring. I started this story, but I want a little bit more emotion in your voice, a little bit more drama. Got it. Let's add some drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named no, Bite. No, 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 ChatGPT. I really want maximal emotion, like maximal expressiveness, much more than you were doing before. Understood. Let's amplify the drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Bite. Bite. Can was you do this in a robotic voice now? Initiating dramatic robotic voice. <laughs> Once upon a time in a world 
not too different from ours. There was a robot named Byte. Byte was a curious robot. So that's pretty cool. It can actually change the way it speaks, make it more dramatic, make it sound like a robot. That could come in handy for things like bedtime stories and maybe meditation apps to get that real calming voice. Things like that, it seems like it'll be really, really good at. Now, the other thing they mentioned is that that latency has been sort of fixed where there's not as much of a gap when you talk and when you get the response. And it does seem like that gap has been closed, but it also kind of feels like maybe they're putting some filler words in there to close that gap. So you ask the question and it goes, hmm, let me think about that for a second. Okay, here's what I think. And it will sort of add filler and then give the response. I believe that's what it's doing. They didn't really speed up the latency on there. They just made it start speaking before it was sort of ready to start speaking, if that makes sense. Can you end the story, <laughs> um, but do it in a singing voice? And so Byte found another robot friend. And they live circuitly ever after. Thank you so much. <laughs> I definitely feel a lot more relaxed. We also want to show you the vision capabilities as the model can also see the whole world around us. Yeah, absolutely. Like, as you can see, you know, you can chat with ChatGPT in real time, but you can also interact with it um, with video as well. Hey, ChatGPT. Hello there. How's it going? It's going really well. Today, I'd really like your help solving a math problem. I'm all ears. What math problem can I help you tackle today? So I'm going to write down a linear equation on a sheet of paper and I'll show you. And then I'd love your help working me through it. But importantly, don't tell me the solution. Just help give me hints along the way. Okay, I see it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't show you yet. Just give me help along the way. One second. <laughs> Whoops. I got too excited. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. ChatGPT, what equation did I write down there? Ah, I see it now. You wrote down 3x plus 1 equals 4. Yep, Let's exactly. Work so what's the first step I should take to try to solve this? The first step is to get all the terms with x on one side and the constants on the other side. So what do you think we should do with that plus 1? Okay, I'm going to try to subtract 1 from both sides and then I'll see what I get. Great idea. Perfect. Now, what do you get when you subtract one from both sides? Okay, so ChatGPT, this is what I ended up with. How does this look? Spot on. Now you've isolated the term with x on one side, and it looks like 3x equal 3. What do you think we should do next to solve for x? I'm not sure. Can you give me another hint? Of course. You have 3x, and you want to find the value of x. Think about what operation would undo multiplication. Is it subtraction? Close, but think of the opposite of multiplication, because 3x means 3 times x. Okay, I think it's division. Let me try to divide both sides by 3, and let me see what I get. Bing! Go. Go ahead and divide both sides by three. So ChatGPT, this is what I ended up with. How does this look? It looks perfect. You've solved it and x equals one. Nicely done. Now this isn't really showing off its math capabilities. That was a super, super simple math problem. I don't really know if it's greatly improved with math. Although people were claiming the GPT-2 chatbot was better with math. So it probably is a little bit better with math. This is more showing off the vision capability. It can see as he writes the numbers on the paper and solves the problem. And really, again, this is showing in real time something that Google was kind of tweaking and speeding up and making it seem like it was able to do really fast, but it was really an edited video. So I think they're really trying to show you, again, look what we can do, but Google hasn't been able to do yet. So ChatGPT, I really love that you, you know, taught the value of math to my friend Mark. And I wrote uh, one last thing I'd love if you could take a look at. Of course, I'd love to see what you wrote. Show it to me whenever you're ready. Okay, so this is what I wrote down. What do you see? Aww. I see. I love ChatGPT. That's so sweet of you. So let me take out a computer for this. So I'm going to open the ChatGPT desktop app like Mira was talking about before. Now they're going to get into the desktop app, which is pretty cool. One of the things that you can do with the desktop app is copy everything on your screen, save it to your clipboard, and then ChatGPT will use that information for its chat. It's also got a button to share your screen and ChatGPT can see everything that's going on on your screen and use that as context as well. Pretty cool. So check this out. And to give a bit of background on what's going on, so here we have um, a computer and on the screen we have some code and then the ChatGPT voice app is on the right. So ChatGPT will be able to hear me, but it can't see anything on the screen. So I'm going to highlight the code, command C it, and then that will send it to ChatGPT. And then I'm going to talk about the code to ChatGPT. Hey, ChatGPT. Hey there. How's it going? Yeah, it's going really well. I was wondering if you could help me with a coding problem today. Of course. I'd love to help you out. What's the coding problem you're dealing with? Okay. I'm going to share with you some code. One second. Sure thing. Take your time. Okay. 
So I just shared some code with you. Could you give me a really brief one sentence description of what's going on in the code? This code fetches daily weather data for a specific location and time period, smooths the temperature data using a rolling average, annotates a significant weather event on the resulting plot, and then displays the plot with the average, minimum, and maximum temperatures over the year. Awesome, thanks so much. And in the code, there's this function foo. Can you describe to me what the plot would look like if I had versus didn't have this function? Sure. The function foo x y takes in a data frame x containing temperature data and a window size y for calculating the rolling mean. It smooths the average temperature, minimum temperature, and maximum temperature columns by applying a rolling mean over the specified window. With the foo function, the plot would show smoother temperature lines because the rolling mean reduces the noise or fluctuations in the data. Awesome. This makes Thanks so much. So yeah, I definitely will want to apply this function. And so I'm going to uh, generate the plot and then show it to you. Give me one second. Absolutely. Take your time. I'm excited to see the plot when you're ready. So, so far, ChatGPT has only been able to see the code. And now I'm going to run it, and then I'll use the vision capabilities of the ChatGPT desktop app so it can actually see everything going on on the screen as well. Now, I don't really know if this is an improved coding ability inside of ChatGPT and GPT-4. I feel like what they just showed, it's been able to do. But what's really cool about it is the fact that they were able to copy the code, and then the ChatGPT was able to read it basically just because it was copied to the clipboard and give this sort of verbal explanation of what was going on in the code and what would happen if you changed the specific variable that he was referencing. I'm sharing with you the plot now. I'm wondering if you can give me a really brief one sentence overview of what you see. The plot displays smoothed average, minimum, and maximum temperatures throughout 2018 with a notable annotation marking a big rainfall event in late September. Fantastic. I have another question for you. Um, which months do you see the hottest temperatures and roughly what temperatures do those correspond to? The hottest temperatures occur around July and August. The maximum temperature during these months is roughly between 25 degrees and 30 degrees, 77 degrees Fahrenheit to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. What's going on with the Y axis? Is this in Celsius or Fahrenheit? The Y axis is in Celsius. The temperatures are labeled accordingly, such as average temperature, minimum temperature, and maximum temperature. If GPT 40 is capable of real time translation, Mark, you wanna try this one? Sure, with yeah. So it's really cool to see this translation feature because this is going to make communicating in other countries so much easier. You just open up your phone to the ChatGPT app and then you can have a conversation with anybody in almost any language. Check this out. Let's do it. All right. yeah. I, I um, speak Italian, so oh, we can okay, just cool. do English let's Italian. Let's try to do English Italian. Sure, let's do it. I would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian and I only speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci come risolviamo le equazioni lineari. <laughs> Sicuramente, sì. <laughs> Certainly, yes. Can you tell <laughs> what you're feeling just by looking at your face? Barrett, you want to give this one a try? <laughs> Absolutely, let's try it out. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna show you um, a selfie of what I look like, and then I'd like you to try to see what emotions I'm feeling based on how I'm looking. Sounds like a fun challenge. Go ahead and show me that selfie, and I'll put my emotional detective hat on. So here's me. So what kind of emotions do you think I'm feeling? <laughs> hmm, it seems like I'm looking at a picture of a wooden surface. Oh, you know what? Um, that what? was the thing I sent you before. Don't worry, I'm not actually a table. Um, okay, so, so take, a, take another look. Ah, uh, that makes more sense. <laughs> Ah, oh, there we go. It looks like you're feeling pretty happy and cheerful with a big smile and maybe even a touch of excitement. Whatever's going on, it seems like you're in a great mood. Care to share the source of those good vibes? Yeah, no, uh, the reason I'm in a really good mood is because we were doing a presentation showcasing how useful and amazing you are. Oh, stop it. You're making me blood. <laughs> Now, one thing that was really interesting about that little clip there was that at first it said, I see something like a wooden table. 
And then he said, oh no, look again. That makes me think that it's actually not watching the video. It's just taking screenshots at certain times because he must've had his phone face down on the table or looking at the table. It took a picture of the table. And then when he put the camera up to himself and he told it to try again, it then saw his face. So I don't think it's watching video footage. I think it's just taking snapshots when you ask questions. And again, you can play with it right now inside of the OpenAI Playground. And I don't know if it's rolled out for everybody yet or not inside of chat GPT, but I just opened my chat GPT account and I got this notification introducing GPT 4.0. You can now try our newest model. It's faster than GPT 4, better at understanding images and speaks more languages. Try it now. And we can see up at the top, we now have the option of GPT 4.0, GPT 4 and GPT 3.5. So I am a plus member, but GPT 4.0 is available inside of my account right now. So my biggest takeaways from this event I think the chat feature is really, really cool. We've been able to chat on the mobile app for a while now, but it doesn't have the inflections. It's got the longer latency. You weren't able to sort of cut it off mid sentence and continue the conversation. So there's a lot of improved features over that voice chat, which I think is really cool. I don't know if we saw a huge leap between GPT-4 and what GPT-4.0 does. I feel like it's a pretty similarly capable model. We saw from all the GPT-2 chatbot videos and tests that it's slightly better than GPT-4 in a lot of areas, but not a huge leap above them. It also seems to be lightning fast. So if you've used GPT-4 inside of ChatGPT at all, GPT-4.0 is a lot faster. If I give it a prompt here and hit enter, we can actually see in real time how fast it actually completes the writing of this prompt. It just cranks it out really, really fast. Also, another sort of theme with ChatGPT is that almost every time they roll out an update like this and make some big announcement, it seemingly kills a whole bunch of little SaaS companies that have been building on top of their APIs. Just like that, inside of the free version of ChatGPT, we're going to have translation, which was a whole industry of tools that have been popping up built on the GPT APIs. We have AI girlfriends. This is a niche within AI that has been really, really rapid rapidly rising. Lots and lots of apps have been submitted to future tools about these like AI girlfriends. Now it looks like GPT-40 could just kind of act as that AI girlfriend or boyfriend or significant other. We've seen tools like Devon and GitHub Copilot. Now, while I don't think this is going to kill tools like Devon or GitHub Copilot, it may make it so you don't need a third party coding tool that you pay extra for. You might be able to do it all just with the free version of GPT-40. There's also apps out there that sort of watch your screen and listen to you all day and can help give you a recap of what you did throughout the day. Well, it looks like the desktop version of this might be able to do that. I don't know if you could just leave it running all the time and just have it kind of keep track of what you're doing, but I wouldn't imagine that that's too far out of the question. I just find it really interesting that OpenAI has this model of building APIs, letting companies build on the APIs, and then going and building a ton of these features just right into their own products so that you don't need the tools that were built with the APIs. It's just really, really interesting to me. This to me seems like what Siri should be. And the rumors are right now that Siri is probably going to use OpenAI's tech. And this might be the future of Siri. We'll find out pretty soon, most likely at WWDC. Now, what's really cool is if you go to the blog post over on OpenAI's website here, they have a whole bunch of other demos that we didn't get into yet. For example, this one, Greg Brockman here got the two phones to basically sing to each other back and forth between the two phones. We've got some interview prep. We've got it playing rock, paper, scissors, testing sarcasm, harmonizing, pointing and learning Spanish, summarizing meetings, real-time translations, lullabies, talking faster, singing happy birthday, just all sorts of demos and use cases that you can check out. So we'll make sure to link to this blog post below the video so you can watch some of these demos. I don't wanna just sit here and just watch demo after demo after demo, but it looks to do some pretty cool stuff. Now, is it as big and as exciting of news as everybody was anticipating? Probably not. The voice and the desktop app are really, really cool. GPT-40 is a slightly improved model, which is also cool. But that voice capability in the desktop app, we don't really have access to yet. They said that's gonna be rolling out soon. So we can't actually play with that now. 
Really, all we have today to play with is that GPT-4.0 model, but not the cool voice features, not the cool apps, not the stuff that really gets us excited that we want to play with right now. We just have a slightly improved version of GPT-4 that we can play with right now. But this definitely brought us one step closer to that movie, Her, where you can legitimately have real life conversations back and forth with a chatbot and feel like you're talking to another human. It's pretty crazy where this stuff is going. I'm so excited for it. I've got a lot more announcements and events coming up. Again, I'm at the Google event right now. So it's going to be interesting to see if Google's going to be able to top what OpenAI just showed off. And then next week, I'm going to be at the Microsoft event where they're going to be trying to one up everybody that came before them. So really, really interesting time in the world of AI. I'm going to be making a lot of videos. You're going to see me in hotel rooms a lot over the next couple of months because I'm going to a lot of these keynotes. Should be a good time. I'm going to do my best to keep you in the loop. So if you're not subscribed to this channel already, make sure you're subscribed. I will make sure you're updated with all the latest AI news. And if you like this video specifically, give it a thumbs up. It makes me feel good and helps the algorithm. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed this little nerd out session about OpenAI's keynote today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.